And what was usually done on the Sabbath? Well, the law was read. Moses would read the complete law. So it is time again for Deuteronomy with further, without further word, a word of wisdom from our Father. And we'll pick that up then in chapter 1 and verse 40. Let's go with it. And it reads, But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Now what had happened here? They came to Kadesh Barnea and were told to enter. They didn't. They wouldn't. They heard stories. There's giants over there. And God had already told them, I've cleared it for you. They refused to go. And you can always wait one day too long. And so they did. And let's go then with verse 41. Then you, this is Moses speaking, all right? Then you answered and said unto me, we have sinned against the Lord. We said he hated us and a bunch of other stuff. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when he had girded on, every, and when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. So <clears throat> here they wait one day too long. One day too long. They're not ready. And this is, you know, the equivalent to this is this. We're about to enter the promises of God. You can call that promised land or whatever you want to. It's called the millennium age. Make certain that you don't wait one day too long in obeying God. We are moving into critical times. Now, I'm not, uh, don't be a doomsdayer and don't frighten anyone. It's just that you need to pay attention. These people didn't. They waited one day too long, and then they get their weapons on, and they're ready to go. There's just one problem. It's one day too late. God's not going to be with them. Verse 42, And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. Now, when God gives you a promise and a command to take something, you can do it. But without God, you're going to get your gourd thumped, all right? Real good. That's just like you that live your lives without God, you get your gourd thumped, right? You're never successful. You might make it almost to the top and crash. Here you go. You got trouble. You're not happy. You don't have peace of mind. I don't care how much money you have because you're without God. Only God can bring you peace of mind. So make certain in these generations, this generation of the fig tree especially, that you have God with you. How do you do that? By being in his plan. Well, how do you know whether or not you're in his plan? By knowing the plan. It's written. He wrote a letter to you concerning it. Have you read it? God said, tell them, don't go now. Verse 43, so I spake unto you, and you would not hear. That's about par for the course. But rebelled against the commandment of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill. Going to be can-do type people after it's too late. One day too late. 44, and the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain... And in Numbers, you'll say the Canaanites as well joined this, but in Deuteronomy only um, the Amorites are mentioned in their mountain people, came out against you and were the strongest force, all right, and chased you as bees do and destroyed you in Seir even unto Hormah. So that's the way it goes. If you're not with God, you're a loser, you're going to lose every time. Uh, and and to, I think he gives a precious rendition of here of what it must have looked like. Have you ever seen a man running with bees chasing him? I mean, he is sparing no energy. He is hauling everything as fast as he can haul it. All right. Verse 45. And ye returned and wept before the Lord. Oh, just dear Jesus, I love you. 
too late, one day too late, friend. But the Lord would not hearken to your voice nor give ear unto you. It's amazing to me that some people profess to be Christian and they will attend a church and they'll maybe 40 years they'll attend a church and they sit on that pew and never crack the Bible for themselves they only listen to some man and never have a total understanding they're, they're not worth a plug nickel in serving God because they absolutely have no conception of what God's plan really says the fact that the false Christ is coming first that will be the biggest deceit of all. It'll be Kadesh, Barneo, all over again when the so-called Antichrist, the false Christ, comes and said, I've come to rapture everyone away. And they all jump up off of the, the pew potatoes, will roll out of the sack and jump on his bandwagon thinking, oh, praise God, I'm the first one taken from the field. And Matthew 24 makes it very clear that the first one taken from the field is taken by Antichrist. I don't know, how are you fixed, friend? This is not a generation to play church. It's very serious. Kadesh Barneo all over again. What are you going to do on that day? Are you spiritually and mentally prepared? Are you armed with the gospel armor? The gospel armor means that you have the truth and that you have the word of God absorbed in our little gray matter up here whereby you know what God expects from you. If you've waited till now, which it's never too late to get into the Word, but for your sake, I pray that you get into the Word, line on line, precept on precept. Study that Word. Show yourself approved. Show yourself a worthy servant of God, meaning you know what the score is. You know who's going to appear when, where, and, and why. That is to say, in the, the chronological order in which the word, God's letter to you, declares it, his promise that you have the victory if uh, you obey him, or you can be like this generation at Kadesh Barneo. Kadesh meaning holy, seems so holy, but Barneo means wandering in the wilderness. Do you know what's in the wilderness? Babel confusion. I don't know. The choice is yours. Verse 46, as we continue. So ye abode in Kadesh many days. Notice Barneo is left off. Kadesh, just holy. Ye abode in holy many days according unto the days that ye abode there. Now, I, want you to, I don't want you to read over that. What was the order of God? Go up. What did they do? They abode. Quite a contrast, huh? So they want to stay behind. They stayed behind, and every one of them will die before the promised land is entered. I don't know. How are you fixed for blades, friend? How are you fixed for knowledge? How is your gospel armor holding up? How much truth do you have? The truth makes up the belt. Will it hold your britches up? You got enough in there to hold your britches up? Or is it just uh, no truth at all to what you've absorbed in the Word? That's what you girt yourself with. It won't hold up much if you don't have a lot of truth in your mind. Hey, that's the gospel armor, Ephesians chapter 6. We just finished studying it. Naturally, I speak in a spiritual sense because there's something as bad as losing your britches as there's something far more embarrassing than losing your britches by your belt breaking of truth. And that's to go to hell with Satan. Not playing church in this generation. It could be one day too late. Make sure that with love you understand your father's letter. Chapter 2, verse 1, let's go with it. Then we turned, Moses continues, Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. In other words, uh, what this means, we were 
obedient in that we did wonder, and it meant they spent several years there, but there is a coming out time. This book of Deuteronomy was written in about the last 30 days of Moses' life. He's 120 years old. 340s, probation, probation, probation. Verse 2, And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Verse 3, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. Verse 4, And commanded, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Esau, of course, being the children of Esau, would be Eden there, uh, meaning red in the Hebrew tongue. Uh, Esau meaning hairy. But they, they were brothers. But you've you got to remember, we've got thousands on top of hundred thousands that are marching here. Now, what they're going to do is to cross below the Red Sea, and they were, they're going to migrate up the eastern coast uh, all the way up to Mount uh, Nebo, and Mount Nebo is where Moses will die, and the Israelites will cross Jordan at the north part of the, of the Red Sea, all right? Now, and, and let's continue. Verse 5, Meddle not with them, the children of Esau, for I will not, will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breath, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Remember uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 27 Esau would, a uh, curse would be upon him by God that he would be away from the fat of the land. Certainly in that area he was. Six, ye shall buy meat of them for money that you may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. This, this word buy, as far as the water is concerned, also the prime means dig. So uh, I leave that up to your choice. Though it's their land, uh, you kind of do your work. Don't be a burden to them. Seven. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy uh, hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. God takes care of his children. Isn't it amazing that in chapter 1, as God had given them light by night, a cloud for a shade by day, fed them quail and manna, and they said, God hates us? And there are many people today that feel God gives them a rough break, but do you know something? They give themselves a rough break. Their lack of faith causes an absolute divorce from God whereby they're going to receive nothing from him until they get their act together. Everyone can change. God's word will change you. Verse 8. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath and from uh, Ezion Gabor, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. In other words, right at the very bottom of the lake, the sea, I should say, not lake, you will have, and right on the border, you will have Ezion Gabor. And um, then they will turn north, and Moab's land lies just north of that on the east of the sea, and um, uh, uh, rather Esau's does, and then comes Moab's. Uh, verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given Ar, that means Ar means city, unto the children of Lot for a possession. It's theirs. Verse 10. The Emans, 
dwelt there in times past, a great people in many and tall as the Anakins. Emens is what they called the giants or Nephilim. That was their name for them. Now, what I want you to know, here are these characters. When God told them the land was clear of giants, who drove the giants out? Well, Moabites and Esau, as well as others. They killed them, the second influx. There were none out there. What does that mean to you today? Let me tell you something. If God is with you, there are no giants in the world today, and don't you back off from anything. You and God make the majority when God has told you to march, when God has instructed you. Now, naturally, it is always for a good reason, and you will always find it written in God's Word in case you be one of these that dream a lot, that God tells you to do certain things. Be careful in that case. But what I'm saying is, is that there are no giants. There's nothing impossible for, for in this world for you. Why? Well, there are many things impossible for man alone, but there is nothing impossible for our Father. And if you are in His plan of the day, order of the day, then you're going to succeed. Why? Well, Luke chapter 10, verses 19 forward lets us know God gives us power over all of our enemies. I don't care how big they are. There's just one little problem. You've got to have a little belief and faith. Or if I were you, I wouldn't hang it out too far. Verse 11. Which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emons. Emons in that tongue means ter the terrible ones, terrors, all right? And they, I guess they were a terror. They frightened a lot of people, 12. They didn't fly, frighten David. Verse 12, the Horems also dwelt in Seir before time. Not, not when they came up on Kadesh Barney. There weren't any out there. They spooked. But the children of Esau succeeded them, killed them. When they had destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their stead as Israel did into the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Why wouldn't the Lord give it to them? They drove out the giants. Why wouldn't he give it to Esau? And, because he drove out the giants. The the. God's so-called little children were afraid to go over there. So why wouldn't God give that land to them and make the rest go around? Of course, God is always fair. I don't care who you are. You get your right dessert from the Father, and that's why they were not about to... Um, uh, the Father wasn't about to give them any of that land. Verse 13, Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered. And uh, here they're crossing again, 14. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea until, until we were come over the brook Zered was 38 years until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host as the Lord swear unto them. Sorry, death, you can't enter the promised land. That was a heavy lesson for them to pay. But God sets examples for his children, and our father is a very strict disciplinarian. You must discipline yourself in the word. That's how serious it is. There are many even, uh, for example, it is written in the New Testament, as well as the Old, that uh, God's elect, the sons and daughters, will be delivered up and they're going to speak. That would frighten a lot of people. It really would. But inasmuch as it's God's Word, you don't have anything to worry about. We have the victory. We're overcomers, 38 years. It cost them 
and death. And they could never see the promised land. And their stubbornness even cost Moses, for he, because of them, was not allowed to enter. I will have a special little uh, presentation on that fact in the last chapter of this great book. It will be my opinion, but uh, I, I feel real comfortable with it. That, uh, you see, God wouldn't let man bury Moses. God himself buried Moses, so nobody knows where he was buried at or if he was buried at all. Was he transfigured? Well, I don't know. He showed up on the Mount Transfiguration. You figure it out. 15. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until they were consumed. Hey, God can't handle wimps, all right? Just doesn't have much use for wimps. And um, there, this, a, a wimp dies a thousand deaths, a brave man once. And, you know, uh, this is, there is a difference between a wimp coward and a brave person. Uh, and uh, I'm speaking from experience. Brave people are scared. That puts them on a little high whereby the uh, adrenaline begins to flow. And, but with a brave person, even though they're, uh, what, why, am, why am I saying this? Because everybody gets scared. That doesn't mean you're a wimp or a coward. It's what you do when it's time to act. A hero, it's automatic. He'll be scared, but he will act, and you better stay out of his way. Unless, um, whatever. But a poor coward just holds back and sulks and dips his head and dies. A thousand deaths. So... Be ready for your father. He's always going to see that you win and uh, will have uh, that promise. So let's continue on to the next verse, if we may. Verse 16. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, got rid of the slag, and uh, 17, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, 18, Thou art to pass over through Ar, that simply means the city, uh, like Armageddon is the city of Megiddo, all right, or the, uh, it can be translated mountain, the coast of Moab this day. Now, that's a pretty tight schedule, isn't it? This is the day. 19. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not nor meddle with them of course this is one of the sons of lot for i will not give thee of the land of the children of ammon any possession because i have given it unto the children of lot for possession of course moab and ammon were the sons of lot by his own daughters and they earned the right to have that land as it was forestated, and it's about to be again for emphasis, so you don't forget. In other words, let me, the, what God is telling you, and this, he's repeating this by both brothers, is the cowards died, and the heroes got the allotment. And they weren't even necessarily, they were children of, uh, uh, of the family of Abraham, but they were not Abraham's children. Verse 20. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time. And the Ammonites can call them Zamzumans. Um, great, you know what Zamzumans is in the Hebrew tongue? Great big terrors. Great big um, um, uh, terror in your mind, I'm sure, if you allowed it. Kadesh Barneo. Well, I don't know. You have to decide for yourself. When God is with you, who can be against you? The answer, no one. And wh what am I striving for? I don't want you to be afraid of the end times. I want you to be glad about them. They are nothing but pure joy for God's servants. Again, it is natural that some people uh, quake a little bit. That's normal to be a little afraid, but be, a, be one of action. A trumpet sounds to execute action, charge. 
So when the trumpet sounds, be ready, charge. Don't worry, piece of cake, piece of cake when God is with you. Great big terrors don't have anything to do with it. They're not half as, you're not half as frightened as they are when they see God and his army coming. 21. A people great and many and tall as the Anakins. Anakins means long-necked, okay? I mean, they were up there. But the Lord destroyed... Now, who really did it? You want in on a little secret? But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead. They didn't really necessarily have to fight them. God destroyed them. And many might say, well, how could he have done that? Well... Have you ever heard where Elisha or Elijah went up to uh, the uh, hill and they were, had sent for him? And, um, I mean, there was an army out there. There were too many to fight. And he said, God, is it possible you could just remove the, the veil from his eyes that he could see the army that's just over our heads for there are more of them than they are them? God has armies many people are not even aware of. That's kind of sad, isn't it? They support God's children. That's why God's children always have the victory. Yeah, the Lord destroyed them. No problem. Piece of cake for him. 22. And he did to the children of Esau, I'm sorry, as he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir when he destroyed the Horams from uh, among them, and they succeeded them and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. So, what is he saying? God is saying here through Moses, it pays to serve God. It pays to listen to God. Don't you know that had Israel marched on forth there, if there had been any giants left over, God would have destroyed them also? Verse 23. And the uh, Avims, this, this is Nephilim. This is their name for Nephilim, Nephilim, which is to say fallen, Napa, fallen angels, which dwelt in Hazirim, um, the, uh, even unto Aza, which is Gaza today. The name should be pronounced almost Gaza. The Capturums, which came forth out of Captor, Captor being a crown, destroyed them and dwelt in their stead. Hey, so that's the way it goes. It's their land. They took it. 24, God continues, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Heshbon. Heshbon meaning stronghold. Scary, huh? Really a stronghold. And his land began to possess it and contend with him in battle. Now, this is, this uh, Heshbon, we're beginning to move, we're moving n northward on the east side of um, the sea. And Heshbon takes us almost to Mount Nebo. So we're, we're, we've almost completed the journey. What did God say? Fight this bunch. Verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. Do you, do you, do you, don't, don't read over that. God gave them a reputation and saw that the reputation spread. God can put things in people's minds. He can, he can uh, erase fear or he can cause the fear of God to, to, to be in their mind. He, he can, uh, in the first place, word of mouth is an easy way to advertise things, and God has a way of placing and hardening the minds of certain people that he can get gossip and malicious rumors started to destroy about whoever he wants to. Would God do that? Well, he doesn't have to do much. People are the ones that carry the rumors. 
So he started the rumors about them, and I'm sure they began to tremble. The, the point I want you to draw from that, God controls the minds even of your enemy. Verse 26, And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedimoth, Kedimoth meaning beginnings, unto Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, and I suppose this is a good thing to be. It kind of gives us a look at the future here. Rather than attacking, first he sends ambassadors and said he sued for peace. 27, let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn in unto the right hand nor to the left. 28, thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat and give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet. In other words, I'm not going to be in war chariots. I'm not going to be cavalry mounted on horseback. We're going to unsaddle. We're all going to walk through on our feet uh, as harmless as little doves passing through your area. And, I mean, this, there's nothing wrong with that. He wa wasn't really disobeying God. He was looking out for his people, and I'm sure God appreciated that because his people were God's children. All people are God's children. So they were watching it very carefully. Verse 29, As the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites, which dwell in Arden, unto me, until I, pass, uh, until I shall pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. Well, of course, Sihon, Sihon has got to worry, man, there are, there are thousands of those people. They're going to just slip right in here in the middle of us, and then they're going to kill us all. So uh, I think maybe we better fight. Well, we'll pick it up here in the next lecture. It is very important that you be familiar with God's plan, that you do not make the mistakes. And that's why, as Paul would reiterate in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, that all these things happened as examples for you at the ends of the earth here. So you would know what's going to happen. Example, type after type after type. I have foretold you all things through the prophets. So that's why this is important to you. I say that because some think, well, that's the Old Testament. There is more written in the Old Testament about the millennium age coming, and I'm not talking about the year 2000, but the millennium, the real Lord's Day. You will find more written there than in all of the New Testament put together as far as how it will be there. That's all recorded in the book of Ezekiel plus many other books. So the Old Testament is not old. There's nothing old about God. Time means nothing to him. He is the same yesterday, he is today, and he will be forever. And you know something? So it is with his word. It is eternal. It will never change. So it doesn't matter whether you're here or in the next earth age. It's still going to be the same word. You can't get ahead without it. So get into it. It's precious.